This is undoubtedly the most thrilling and terrifying adventure horror film I've ever seen, and it is also one of the most despairing and suffocating monster horror movies. It is the horror film par excellence of 2005, The Descent. Although it's been 18 years since its release, no other film of the same genre has managed to take its place. A word of caution to those with claustrophobia, watch this film at your discretion, as it is genuinely frightening. The story unfolds around six adventurous girls who plan an expedition to explore a cave system known as Borum. Little do they know, this journey would turn into a perilous, one-way trip. A photograph taken before their departure becomes the last image left in the world. Following the plan, the six women set off in two SUVs and soon reach the depths of the forest. After gearing up, they proceed on foot, following a stream upstream. As they approach the cave, they stumble upon the body of a recently deceased deer, seemingly killed by some beast. Such occurrences are not uncommon in the wilderness, so they don't dwell on it much. Instead, they excitedly take photos with the carcass, unaware that the creature responsible for the deer's demise is far more terrifying than any wild animal. Eventually, the group arrives at the fabled Borum Caves. The entrance is a vertical drop, deep and foreboding. Juno, the experienced and adventurous one, decides to go down first to scout, as she organized and chose this specific location for their adventure. Despite the cave's small entrance, it opens up into a vast, breathtaking underground world. As Juno beckons, the others follow suit, marveling at the spectacular sights. However, Sarah, one of the explorers, notices a deep blood handprint on the cave wall, an ominous sign. Not wanting to alarm the others, she keeps this discovery to herself. While moving forward, a swarm of bats suddenly bursts out, startling Sarah. Juno manages to calm her down, and they continue their exploration. Next, they needed to crawl through a narrow and vertical passage to reach the deeper cave systems. Once everyone caught up, Juno ignited a flare, instantly illuminating the dark cavern and revealing an immense cave hall before them. The sight filled everyone with excitement. However, as they split up to explore the cave, Sarah thought she heard a faint, unusual sound. Driven by curiosity, she followed it, only to find it was just the sound of water dripping onto rocks. But as she turned around, Juno's sudden appearance gave her another scare. After a brief rest, they decided to press on. Soon, Sarah spotted a hidden horizontal passage. Before entering, Rebecca noticed something off, the cave's structure didn't match the descriptions in the guidebook. Juno dismissed this, claiming guidebooks aren't always accurate. Rebecca didn't press the matter. While they were talking, Holly, always eager to lead, crawled into the passage. This path was even narrower, just wide enough for one person to advance. For anyone with claustrophobia, it was a real challenge. After Holly safely got through, the others quickly followed. Sarah, choosing to bring up the rear, was about to enter when she heard a noise behind her. She didn't pay much attention, assuming it was just the others, and hurried to catch up. But midway through, Sarah found herself stuck, unable to move forward or back. In such an enclosed space, her breathing became rapid, and she felt like she was suffocating. Seeing Sarah in distress, Beth returned to calm her down, helping her regain control. Just as Beth was about to pull her through, the rocks above started to loosen. Realizing the danger, they quickly crawled forward, narrowly escaping as the passage collapsed behind them. Luckily, everyone was unharmed, but they were now trapped, as the passage they had come through was completely sealed off. According to the guidebook, the cave system was supposed to have three exits, offering a glimmer of hope for an escape. However, this hope was quickly dashed when Juno revealed she hadn't brought the guidebook. Moreover, they weren't even in the planned Borum cave system, Juno had changed the destination to this unexplored cave, believing Borum lacked challenge. Only now did the group realize they had been misled by Juno. Despite her intentions of discovering the cave together, they were now stuck with no easy way back. The level of danger in the cave was beyond anything they had imagined. As they navigated through a new passage, they faced a dead end with a sheer drop into an abyss. Beth dropped a stone down the chasm, and it took a full two and a half minutes to hear it hit the bottom, a fall from here meant certain death. Their only escape route was a passage across the gap, which required someone to traverse and set up ropes along the way. With a backpack lost during the previous collapse, their rock anchors were limited, posing a significant challenge. Rebecca, an experienced climber, 
took on the task. She used crevices in the rock to suspend herself and place the anchors, a physically demanding process even for someone of her skill. While preparing to set the third anchor, she discovered an old, rusty piton in the rock, evidence that others had been there before. Not dwelling on it, Rebecca used the piton to save her remaining anchors. Once the final anchor was in place, she reached the other side. Now, all she had to do was throw the safety rope back so the others could follow using the path she had secured. When it was Juno's turn, she unexpectedly threw the safety rope back, planning to retrieve and reuse the rock anchors for later use. However, as it often happens, an accident occurred. Juno, less skilled in climbing than Rebecca, couldn't hold on and fell. The piton, which seemed sturdy earlier, now began to wobble dangerously. Fortunately, with the help of her friends, Juno avoided a fatal fall, but Rebecca wasn't so lucky. The high-speed friction of the rope severely injured her right palm, leaving it bloody and torn. As Sam attended to Rebecca's wounds, Sarah and the others noticed the shaky piton. They realized that if other explorers had been there, this cave would have been named and documented, but it wasn't. The only explanation was that the previous exploration team hadn't made it out alive, an ominous sign for sure. However, a subsequent discovery reignited their hope. On the cave wall, they found an ancient painting showing two other exits from the cave. Where there's life, there's hope, they thought. But what they didn't realize was that a terrifying creature was lurking in the shadows, watching them. Soon, they reached a fork in the path. Unsure which way to go, Juno used her lighter to test the airflow. Holly, eager to leave, rushed ahead, mistaking a distant light for the exit. Juno warned her to slow down, it wasn't daylight, but it was too late. Holly slipped into a deep pit. Although Juno caught her in time, she couldn't pull her up. And Holly paid a heavy price for her recklessness, losing a leg. The group managed to bandage Holly's wound, but then Sarah heard something strange again. Following the sound, she found equipment left by the previous exploration team. As she examined it, the sound grew clearer and closer, something was out there. Sarah, terrified, turned on her flashlight and saw a pale, humanoid creature. She was completely stunned, but in the next instant, the creature vanished. Eager to share what she saw, Sarah ran into Juno, who had followed her. She quickly relayed her encounter, but Juno dismissed it as a hallucination. Frustrated, Sarah shared her experience with the others, but no one believed her. They reasoned that it was impossible for any human-like creature to survive in such a harsh environment. They also considered Sarah's recent personal tragedy, losing her husband and child in a car accident a month ago, which might have led to her hallucinations under stress. Regardless, they had no choice but to continue searching for an exit. With Holly injured, their progress slowed down significantly. Under Juno's guidance, they finally reached a steep cliff with a constant flow of water, a potential sign of an exit above. However, after a challenging climb, they were greeted with a horrifying sight. Sarah turned on her camera's night vision and saw thousands of animal skeletons, indicating the presence of a top predator in the cave. Panic set in among the group. Rebecca, overwhelmed with emotion, began to scream, unaware that her voice was attracting something dangerous lurking in the darkness. Hello! 